Not yet. Not yet. Bryn and Kyle. Kyle, welcome. Hey, thank you. There we go. Perfect. Bryn, Bryn you can't hear me. Go help. have Paula help you. Okay. So you guys, what we're going to talk about today in Ignite is this is your first, this is your first session for the 12 session course. Now what today's a lot about is getting started on understanding um, some mindset, some basic foundational principles as you guys are going to begin your business. The concept of this, um, of this class is to build your business. Now, normally this class is taught in a three hour block, but we've cut it down to two hours because the first hour, a lot of the stuff that you'll want to do, we want you to do on your own. But then also every single morning we're in this room at nine o'clock to do scripting and role play. And then we do lead generation from 930 to 11. So there's lead gen and um, involved in Ignite. We would love to have you come. So if you want to come an hour before at 10 and do your lead gen, because you're going to be looking to make contacts throughout this entire system, because Ignite is not about learning how to do real estate. It's about getting business. It's about actually getting started. So you're welcome to show up at 10 and do your lead generation, your 10 contacts, or come in at 9 in the morning, script all the way through. So this is built to do the whole session, but we're not saying Ignite runs 9.30 in the morning till 2 o'clock. We're saying come in from 9 to 11, do your lead gen, and 11 to 1, you're going to have the class. Any questions on that? Okay, perfect. Now, I always like to warn everybody as we get started that there's one thing that I've learned. This is probably my, I don't know how many times I've taught Ignite. This has got to be my 20th Ignite probably that I've seen through. And there's one thing that I know. One thing that I know is all you guys are starting today. And next week on Friday, you will hit the Ignite wall. The Ignite wall is, I'm starting to get busy. I'm overwhelmed. I can't believe there's two more weeks of classes for two hours a day, for three hours a day. And you'll start to go, I'm just going to miss on Monday. I'm just going to miss on Wednesday. I'm not going to do it. And you're going to hit that wall and you're going to start to peter out. Or Friday comes, I'm just going to miss the Friday Ignite. I will tell you guys, it is not, you got to commit today. You got to commit today that you're going to come to all the classes because if you don't, that wall will hit and you will peter out and we'll have one person left on the last day. It happens every single time because you don't believe that you got to commit now. Because you're like, no, 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 I'm going to do it. And that wall hits and you're going to have to think in your mind, Jessica said this is going to happen and I can't have that. Oh, well, on Monday, I've just got to, or I just, ooh, it's going to happen every single time. Now, the reason I say it's super important is that third week is when people start to peter out, that's buyer's week. Everybody loves the second week because it's all about listings, right? Everybody loves to talk about listings because that's the foundational part of that, which is fantastic. I'll tell you why buyer's week is important. Because a lot of young agents, as you begin, you'll begin to find buyers. Buyers are, are easy to find. They're everywhere, right? And if you have a listing, especially when you have a listing. So what will happen is, is you're going to start showing houses and you're going to show houses for days and days and days and hours on end to people because you don't know how to get them down to understanding what they need to know and stop looking at so many houses. And what you'll do is you don't get paid for showing those houses. You get paid the same showing one house as showing 500 houses. So if you guys can't figure out, if you can't figure out how to get those buyers to understand what they need so that you can provide them a list of what really houses meet their criteria. And then when they want to look at more and you know they don't meet the criteria that you talked about, having the script and understanding how to get them to understand that. Also showing homes in a way that they understand how this house doesn't fit or how it does fit. And this is the one they should make the offer on. Because you've listened to them and they've said what their needs are. But sometimes they just like to look at houses. But you don't get paid by the hour. But you got to be able to articulate that without being a jerk and without be feeling like you're not giving good customer service. So being in buyer's week is super important. The first Monday of buyer's week is needs analysis. How do I find out or help them understand what, they, what are their needs versus their wants? Because there's a lot of wants, but there's not as many needs. And they need to make an offer on a house that they get three out of their five needs. Because you're never going to find the perfect house. Ever. People who are looking for the perfect house want you to drive around for days and days and days and hours and hours and hours. 
and spend all that money and do all those kinds of things. And then they never make an offer. So you have to be able to articulate them out on that. And then the next one, so that's needs analysis. Then Wednesday is showing homes, finding and showing homes. How do I do that effectively so that we don't look at as many? My biggest um, aha from one of the classes I went to, or one of the teachers, says that you don't show homes which are closest together. You show home the first home that is meets the most of their criteria. And every house after that is downward. And you tell them that. This one, this house, is the one that's closest to what you want. And then you drive to the second one, even if it's across town. This house will be less of what you want than the last one. And they look at it and they see that because you're reminding them what they talked about, that their needs were. And then you drive to the next one and they go, it's even worse. Guess what they want to do by that third house? Go back to the first one and make an offer. But that comes through great needs analysis, great showing of homes. And then you've got to nego uh, make and receive offers. You've got to put an offer in that's going to beat in a multiple offer situation. That's Friday of Buyer's Week. See how Buyer's Week is super important? And then the next, the final week, which is so hard because it's the fourth week and now you're exhausted and business is starting to come, negotiating. That's Monday. Then Tuesday is getting the transaction to closing because that's where you make your commission. If, people, if your job is just opening doors, why are you making 3% for that? Seems like you're a little overpaid if all you do is open a door. You've got to negotiate the contract and get it to close. And holding the deal together is where you earn your commission when all the bumps and bruises. So that's Wednesday of the last week. So you see why those last two weeks, it makes me, I don't want anybody going, oh, those last two weeks, it's okay, I'm going to miss it. No, those are essential. But you're excited your first two. Okay? So I want you guys committed. Online, we got some people online. I want you guys committed. Now, what's also exciting is I gave you guys the schedule for Ignite. Those are the people that are going to be teaching it. Now, we have experienced agents teaching that. You only get me, but you have to suffer through me for the first one. Now, the reason, the reason you're going to want to be in that room is it is darn hard to sit down for two hours with Cindy Bates or Mike Hicks or the Murdoch Manwaring Group or Elias Trejo because they sell a lot of real estate. Do you think it will benefit you to be in a class with them for two hours and get to raise your hand to go, okay, what about this? What about this? Or give us your advice on this. So you get to be in a room with people that are doing this business at a high level so it's also the reason why I say don't miss a class because you never know what, they're, what little tip they're going to give you. And then come back. These are different instructors than last, last time we taught it. So you'll get different instructors every single time. Okay, any questions on that, on my plug for make it through Ignite? Okay, you guys are awesome. So let's get started. Let's roll right in. First of all, I want you guys to, does everyone have their KW username and password? Okay, so have you guys done your paperwork with Josie? No. Yes, and they haven't got you username and password yet. Okay, so they're going to be able to do that because you're going to be in Ignite. So we'll get with Josie again. And then also, tell me your name one more time. Susan. Susan. So on that, if you are, um, are you joining Keller Williams? Do you know when? Um, I don't know. I don't know when yet. Okay. I'm done with my classes um, the second week in June. Okay. Perfect. So she can get you into the system enough that you can get the resources. So get with Josie on both of those. Okay. Now for you guys that are in the system, I want you guys to see, I'm going to share my screen here. And everybody online, is everybody online in the system already? Get there. Yes. And Bryn, I think you are. Can you hear me, Bryn? Yes. All right. Perfect. Okay. So let's look over here. And I'm going to minimize this guy so I can get all my tech to be nice and fancy the way I want it okay so from your my kw home page all of the materials every time you guys come to class you guys are going to need to bring your materials you can print everything out but it's 40 to 60 pages every session or bring a um, bring a tablet or a laptop Whatever you want to have, because there's videos to watch. There's things that the instructor will want you to read out loud. They're going to show you some different things. So you'll want to have something to write on, and you'll want to have your materials for each session. So how you find them is you go right here into Education and into KW Connect. This is where everything is. And we'll send you out an email with a link to this as well. And then once you're in here, you just type in at the top 
you type in ignite. I guess I for this one I should move this up to. You. And then just hit enter. And then what it will bring up, possibly, here we go, is in the courses, there's the Ignite course. And here are the course materials. Click right here. And then there's the student resources. That's where you get to everything. And then all of the sessions and all of the missions are here. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday are the classes. And then they give you missions to do on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Because again, this is about doing, not just listening. It's about generating business. So by Wednesday, you guys should have mission one and mission two completed. Because your mission should be done prior to coming to class. So you guys need to get mission one. And this is a lot of setup, just making sure your Keller Williams is set up and those kind of things. So you click on that mission. It gives you all your things you need to do. And it gives you videos to watch. Okay, so you'll complete your mission prior to coming to class. Also, here is your US instead of Canada, there's your manual. So that's the one either you wanna download. A lot of people like paper, they have their binders and they make notes and they go back and reference that, that is just fine. This is however you'd like to do it. But worst case scenario, bring your laptop so you can follow along and then something to write with. Any questions you guys on how to find that? Anybody in the internet worlds? Nope, good. Um, Kyle, good? Yeah, I'm getting there. Perfect. Okay. So there's all of the sessions. Now, in this year, you see all the sessions. Scroll to the very bottom. Here is everything else that you're, they're going to tell you. Look at this. It's all right here to download. The one I really think you're going to want to look at is the scripts. Because we're going to talk a lot about scripts. What do I say to be effective? There are 70 pages of scripts right here in this Ignite Scripts packet. Also, your database sheet the great one to download also there is your buyers presentation pre-listing and listing presentations a lot of agents where do I where do I get a presentation this is the one that they ignite there's your needs analysis your toolkit everything in here is all downloadable does everyone remember how to get here where did you go KW connect and then type in ignite exactly right exactly right Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So that is your sessions to get in and have all of your materials. So you should come prepared for your next session. Now, I also want to let you guys know that because we're only a two hour time frame, and I want you guys to be able to ask questions. And I want them to share their experiences and share things. They're not going to go page by page. The instructor is not going to get through every single page and cover every single session. I've told all the instructors, if they can read it, don't cover it. Cover the stuff they can't read. Cover the, the, the activities you can do. Tell, tell them they're, you're, you're, the things you would want them to know. So by coming to class, you're going to need to read your session before because you're going to want to ask questions. Now, if you've got somebody in the room and we're talking about buyer's presentations and you haven't read your session prior to, you may not have any questions to ask. And you've missed that chance to go in and do that. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. Perfect. So read your session and do your mission prior to coming to class and then bring it in on your, um, you can have it on paper or you can have it on digital. Okay. All righty. Kyle, I just muted you just so you know. Sorry about that. Okay. Let's go back out here and take a look at our sessions and we're going to get started. Also, inside that KW Connect, if you guys have anything, um, any questions on, on your tech or what we're talking about, come and see me after hours or Josie, and we'll make sure you've got everything that you need that we're talking about in this, in this session. Okay. Let's go here and here. Get your head in the game. Get your head in the game. You're embarking on a new, exciting, challenging adventure, leaving your former life behind. Getting your heart and your head in the right place is how you want to begin your adventure. So for you guys, why haven't you achieved all your financial goals so far in real estate? What do you think that is? Why do you think you haven't done that yet? These are obvious answers. Haven't been in it long enough. Perfect. Why else? Why 
else do you think that you couldn't, that you're not achieving what you want? Don't know how. Don't know how. I love that. What else? Is anybody a little nervous? I always get that a little bit, a little bit nervous to kind of get started. I want to make sure I know enough. Great. Perfect. So what do you think is the one thing that sets successful real estate agents apart from unsuccessful real estate agents? What do you think that is? If there was one thing, what do you think that could be? Time? What kind of time, Adam? Uh, putting in your time for mm. buyers. Your Excellent. Not giving in enough time in the business. Love it. Put in there because we get a little freedom. We love that. Yeah. So, training. Okay. Say that one more time. Training. Oh, training. Excellent. Okay. Training. 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 Perfect. What else? What else? What sets a, a successful agent apart from the others? Networking. Networking. That they get out. That they get out and network. And the unsuccessful. Okay, great. What else? Reputation. Reputation. Excellent. I love that. Experienced agents have a, successful agents can have a good reputation. You guys ever met a bad realtor? Pretty much half the people that get into real estate get in because they had a bad realtor, and they know they can do a better job than that, right? Yep, I agree with that. So you want to know what the real answer is? Zach got close. Successful agents generate business every single day. Every single day, they lead generate. They look for ways to get business in the pipeline. Because a successful agent has consistent business. And that comes from consistent lead generation. Why do you think all agents don't do that? Why don't they network or why don't they lead generate every day? Why do you, why do you think that is? They don't like it. I love it. Time consuming. Great. What else? What's the reason you think they don't do it? I know we all go, why? That seems ridiculous. Disorganized. I think that's totally true. Absolutely. They're, I don't know where to start or what to do. Dis exactly, disorganized. Why else? Too many distractions. Love that. They don't understand the importance. Don't understand the importance. Exactly right. Distractions. There's millions of things to do. Excellent. So in this, this is the one thing that is my aha, uh -huh, is it's boring. It's, it's boring. It's not, it's not exciting. It's not, you know, and there's a high level of feeling of rejection. They're worried about that. Also, they feel like they don't want to be a telemarketer. They don't want to be that sales guy, that one that you're like, I don't want to catch him in a party, right? Don't get caught in, in the bathroom with this guy because you're never going to get out of there because they're going to sell you their, you know, energy drink, whatever it is that they're selling, right? So in that, they don't want to feel like that. But I think everyone wants to generate business every day. But I think the activity is what holds us back. And I think also our mindset holds us back of we have excuses. We call this in, in bold, your drunk monkey, something telling you don't be uncomfortable, right? Something in the back of your mind says, get back to comfort, get back to comfort. And we call that your monkey brain is get to be what's easy and what's simple and what's comfortable. So on this, if you desire to succeed, um, if your desire to succeed is more powerful than your fear from doing the one thing that will make you successful, Do you think that's the key? Your desire to succeed is more powerful than your fear from doing the one thing that will get you there. Now, that's easy to say yes to, right? It's easy to say yes to, and it's harder to apply, which is pretty much the mantra of real estate. Real estate's not rocket science, but it's not easy. It is, it is hard in the aspect of a lot of um, things. So if we think of that way, I think we will be ready to hit the ground running. Will somebody read this out loud for me, nice and loud? We chose Keller Williams as the vehicle to reach your goals. It might help you build momentum to get you there fast. Perfect. Thank you. Do you guys want to get to the financial rewards fast? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I don't. I mean, there might be a few of you that are in here for fun, but I'm in here to make some money, right? And I want to help people, and you want to do this, and that's why we do this. So the idea is, can we get you there quicker? Because everybody in this room is smart enough to do real estate. 
You absolutely are. You will be successful whether you're at Keller Williams or anywhere else. The question is, can we get you there faster? Can we get you to Mike Hicks's level without the 30 years of experience? Can we get you to any agents without the 15 years leading up to it? How fast can we get you there? It's from doing the activities that they do. Um, in bold, we call this be, do, have. Be, do, have means if you want to have some, something that someone else has, you need to do the activities that they do. But to really do the activities they need to do, you need to be the kind of person that they are, which means dedicated. Um, they come in every day. They don't you know, let other things distract them. They, they are the kind of person that says, nothing's going to stand in my way of reaching my goals. I'm going to be that kind of a person, and that kind of person does the things that need to be done, and then they have the things that they want to have. So we're going to work on thinking about how do we become like those successful agents so that we can do and then have. Make sense? My, that's my favorite bold law is be, do, have. So we're first going to talk about the, um, the things that can propel you forward in your career. And it's not a secret. It's lead generation. It is the unsexy part of real estate that gets all the results. Gary Keller, the co-founder of the company, says you're actually in two businesses. You're in two businesses. You're in the business of lead generation, and then you're in the business of real estate. Why do you think it isn't the other way? <laughs> Got to have the business before you can do it, right? We always talk about, you can know your contracts inside and out, but if you don't have one to write, it doesn't make a lot of difference. So now we want you to know how to write your contracts, but if you don't go know, learn how to find them first, that's where you're gonna be, that's where you're gonna struggle in real estate. You may think lead generation is making phone calls that are bothering and annoying people, and that is not what it is. What it is, is the easiest way to think of it is you need to adopt an attitude of contribution. Lead generation, is looking for people to help and contributing to what they need. That is what lead generation is. And any activity that gets you to that point is called lead generation. Any activity that allows you to offer your help and come from contribution is lead generation. So that can be face-to-face. -face. That can be knocking on doors. That can be at the ball game. That can be at Sam's Club or at your PTA meeting or on the phone or whatever. It could be Facebook. It can be Twitter. Whatever it is, but if you're saying, I'm doing an activity that I'm purposely looking for people to help and come from contribution, you get to check the box of I'm lead generating. Now, we don't get to check the box of I'm lead generation by doing something that doesn't, that doesn't have any response. Just sending a mass text out, do you think that's lead generation? I would say it is, and it's ineffective. <laughs> you know, we can send out a mass. What about mailing a letter? Is that lead generation? It is. How effective is it? How effective is something that is generic and not personalized to someone else? Now you should, whenever you do something that doesn't evoke a response, I want you to feel like you're that sales guy who's just looking to see if you might want to buy something and then moving on. That's not the business we're in. We're not in the business of you don't have anything for me right now, I'm not interested. We have to be in the business of relationships for the long term. If I can help you right now, Adam, but you can't help me, that's okay. Can't, let me help you. Maybe it's finding a window washer or a guy who's going to you know, go out and give a bid on the roof or some, whatever it is. Or maybe it's just getting advice on the real estate market. Or maybe it's a for sale by owner who doesn't want to list with you, but you give them good advice anyway. That is lead generation because you're building that long-term relationship and you're coming from contribution. So now all we have to do is do some of those activities every day and then document it. Does that feel better than thinking about cold calling? Because is cold calling really that effective of lead generation? Not as much as it could be. Now, if you're doing business and you need to generate more business and you're doing the other parts well, you could add cold calling into it. But I don't know if that's where you want to start. But some people like to start with strangers before they like to start with people they know. Why do you think that is? Why would people rather start with strangers than friends and family? Right. You don't want to be that weird guy at family reunions that nobody wants to talk to because all they talk about is real estate. I'm that guy, by the way. That is absolutely me. I want to talk about real estate all the time. I love that. But I'm hopefully coming from contribution. But now at least I think I've gotten to the point where they're not weirded out and they, don't, they know I'm not attacking them, you know, on the weird thing. Yeah, what, why else? Why else don't we just start with friends and family? We go to cold calling first. 
Mm-hmm. Exactly right. At least I'm never going to see them again. Woo! Yeah. Great. So in that, now I want you guys to think about this. Do you think it's more likely that a stranger is going to reject you than a family member? It actually is more likely. They're, they don't know you from Adam. Who are you? I, liter but you literally are Adam, so that's kind of weird. So I'll stop using that. I'll stop using that joke. But that in reality, they don't know you. But your friends and family know your heart and know that you're a good person and that you're an honest person and that you do want to help people. They're a lot more likely to say yes and not reject you than a stranger. And your friends and family want to help you. And if you're looking to help them, it actually works out. So it's just our mindset that is the problem. We're worried that they don't know that, that we're going to have some kind of weirdness between us and our family. And generally that has to do with we don't know what to say to make it not weird. So, okay, attitude of, um, an attitude of um, contribution. That's what we're looking for. The most successful at this business, it takes a certain mindset and attitude to keep at it every day and then especially to excel. Fortunately, Keller Williams has a foundational model for a successful mindset, which came into existence when Gary Keller asked the questions of hundreds of top agents. What is the difference between those who achieve at the highest level from those who don't seem to achieve much? And all through the research, Gary discovered that high achievers have three basic attributes. Mindset, attitude, and approach to, le approach to life. They're all different. They have all different personalities. They have all different um, ways they do things. But these three things are what they found high ch achievers have in common. The mindset, an attitude, and approach to life. So based on these three attributes, he developed the six personal perspectives. So we're going to run through these six personal perspectives. The first one is self-mastery. Now these are steps, not all at once. So you go one to two, two to three, three to four. So self-mastery is the possession of great knowledge, skills, and habits that make you the master of you. When you commit to self-mastery, you know your goals. You're accountable to yourself in that I'm committed to achieving what I desire, and I'm going to commit to doing that. You know your strengths and weaknesses. How many of you guys know your strengths and weaknesses? I am well acquainted with mine, well acquainted. But what I do with that is I don't use that as, as an excuse not to achieve. It means I go, I know this is a problem or an opportunity that I have, and I'm going to figure out tactics so that I can lessen that effect. And I'm going to look for my strengths and focus on those. Because I know I'm, I'm who I am, and i got to work with that. But I also know that I can look for opportunities to improve, and that's self-mastery. That doesn't mean I'm always great at it. But that's what I'm constantly striving for. And self-mastery is knowing how to work with both your strengths and weaknesses to seek and master knowledge, skills, and habits to reach your goals. So we have to first commit that we're going to master ourselves and in the things we do. Because in this business, the one thing we find is no one's going to call us if we don't show up for work. We don't get fired. And yet we probably should. Who's our boss? You. So every day at the end of the day, I want you guys to ask yourself, would I hire myself tomorrow from the activities that I did today if I am hiring them to run my business? If we think about that every day, if I'm my own boss and I separate myself to boss and employee, tomorrow am I going to hire myself to do the activities I was supposed to do? Or maybe am I going to get fired? But luckily, we don't fire ourselves that often. But what we can do is it's not about firing ourselves. It's saying, okay, that means if I was my boss, what would I tell myself to do tomorrow? What opportunities would I give? What, what training would I give myself? What accountability would I give myself? What would I give myself as structure if I was the boss talking to myself as my employee? If we take that attitude every day, you'll watch your business change. Look at yourself as your own employee every single day. So committing to self-mastery. The second one is committing to the 80-20 principle. Does anyone know what the 80-20 principle is? Does anyone know the story? It's called Pareto's Law. Anybody know that? Internet land? Oh, good, because then I get to tell the story. Pareto was gardening. 
And what he realized is he planted peas. And I don't know when this was, but Pareto sounds like back in the Greek days. So I'm going to go with that, right? I should know more details about that. So he was planting his garden and he noticed his peas. And he noticed that 20% of his pea plants present, um, produced, thank you, Adam, 80% of the yield of the crop. 20% of the plants produced 80% of the yield. And he thought, huh, that's really interesting. So then he started watching that around. And he started to realize that was applicable everywhere. 20% of the people presented or provide, yielded 80% of the results. 20% of his activities got 80% of his results. 20% of the bees made 80% of the honey. And he looked and looked and he started to study it. And all of a sudden it became a law. And he realized that was true in life, in pretty much everything. 20% of your activities will yield 80% of your results. And that applies in real estate. So what do you think the key to understand in that is? We call it knowing your 20. Looking at your daily activities and looking what you do and knowing what are the 20% of the activities that actually deliver 80% of the results. And then do that more than you do anything else. Stick to your 20. So when you hear in Keller Williams, stick to your 20, that's the idea. Live in the 20. Because if I just spend all my time in the 20, how do you think my results will be? Amazing, right? That 80% still needs to be done. 80% doesn't mean it's not able to be done. But I, you always say, do I need to do it now? How urgent is it? Can I get someone else to do it? Or can I let it go? And if you look at your 80% and deliver that, you'll notice, I don't know if you guys heard of the book, The One Thing. So Gary Keller wrote the one thing, and it was about focus. How do I get the most results? Well, it's figuring out what's the 20, and then what's 20%. So let's say there's 100 things to do, right? 20 things out of 100. So now those are my 20. What's 20% of 20? Then it's five. Am I right? Four. Four. That's right, four. And then you go down, and then you realize, in the end, there is one thing that if I start with it, it is the most effective thing for the rest of my day. It delivers the most results. So I'm going to start with that. And I'm not going to move on until I've completed that one thing. And then I move to the next most effective thing for my day. So when I create a, a to-do list, there is a must-do and there's a should-do, not a whole list of to-dos. So can I determine what are the must-dos? And then of the must-dos, what's the one that I need to start with? They call it the domino effect. That by doing it, I push it down and everything else starts to fall into place because it was the most effective thing. That's what the one thing book is about. Focusing on your one thing. It's not one thing forever. It's one thing at a time. And not switching your tasks and saying, I'm going to do this. Multitasking is a myth. I'm not going to switch back and forth. I'm going to do this until it's done. And then I'm going to do the next thing. And the next thing, but I'm not going to just randomly choose which one I'm doing. I'm going to actually have a plan. Does that make sense? That is the true 80-20 principle, is sticking to your 20 and doing the most effective things first. So what do you think the most effective thing in real estate is? What's the one thing? Lead what? Say it again. Lead generation, right? Because if I have leads, does everything else get easier? Then my next thing is lead generation. What do you think the second thing is? And we're about to figure out our 20. We're about to figure out our 20. I'm going to unshare. I'm going to try to be professional. Here we go. So lead generation. What do you think second is? I'll give you a hint. It starts out with lead again. You'll, fo you'll find out. Follow up. Follow up. That is exactly right. I can generate leads, but if I don't ever follow up, I'm wasting my time. This is where you make money. This is where you get rich. Okay? Your third thing in your 20. Anybody have any idea? Go on appointments. Do these two things lead to that? Yep. If I focus on going on appointments, is it the most effective thing? Nope. We start here and we move through. The third thing, 
negotiate contracts. Negotiate contracts. Will I have that if I go on appointments? Will I have appointments if I go if I do lead generation and follow up? Yep. Negotiate contracts. And the last thing that we always add in is script and role play. Why do you think that's important? Why is that in your 20? Because that's the one thing everybody is like, Mwah. I don't like this one. And then you know what to say. But what to say? What do you when you say that? What do you mean? What are you saying? What is it? Well, how to explain if the customer is asking you a question, you take your knowledge and you know how to explain that to them. So it's easy for them. I to call it being them. articulate. There you go. Do you have validity if you are more articulate? If you can articulate what their desire is in a more effective way, does it, does it help the customer? Because remember, coming from contribution, right? If we ramble on, which as real estate agents, we're ramblers, all of us. Oh, I love to talk. Why do you think I teach classes? I just talk the whole entire time, right? Talk, talk, talk. But do you think they appreciate that? No, they want, because it's usually not about them. You're usually rambling about yourself. Beginning to articulate their benefit, coming from contribution, is articulating, and I also call getting better at your job. Script and role play means I'm getting better at my job. I am practicing to play in the game. Um, I forget who said, um, John Davis probably, president of the company, he said, how many hours does an NFL team play practice to play in a one-hour game? Two-hour game. They practice, well, my brother played in the NFL, and he did 10 hours a day, six days a week during, during the season. 60 hours to play in a two-hour game. And that's if you got in the game, right? 60 hours to play in a two-hour game. But yet, as real estate agents, we don't think we need any practice. But the game is the appointment. That's the game. So we better have some practice in if we want to be at pro level. Because I will tell you there's somebody out there at pro level, and they might be the next appointment walking in the door. Or they were the one right before you, and you look like an amateur compared to what they just did because they practiced it. Now, they may have taken 15, 20 years of practicing it, but there are those out there that practice it faster and got there faster. We're talking about getting into production quicker. It's about practicing instead of taking years and years and years practice and losing countless amounts of deals to practice on them. Okay? This is your 20. Everything else in real estate is awesome, but it is the 80%. Oops. Okay? It is the 80. Needs to be done, but it comes after your 20. Did you guys see that in internet land? Sorry, I tried to write it in black. They're already asleep. Just kidding. So on this, so let's keep going. So now we've committed to self-mastery. We understand the 80-20 principle and we're committed to staying to our 20 and getting to our one thing every day. Starting with our one thing every day. And every day that one thing might be different, but I have a feeling in, in your business, it probably is going to come into one of these two. If you have enough leads coming in, but you're not following up, you need to back off a little bit on the lead gen and hit that follow-up. Every single time, hit that follow-up, okay? So it leads us to the next one is three, E to P. Entrepreneurial versus purposeful. E to P, being entrepreneurial, moving to purposeful. What entrepreneurial is, is everything that you've got in your, in your toolkit right now. All of the skills and knowledge and, and pizzazz and personality and experience, all the things you currently have, when you utilize those to accomplish something, you are being entrepreneurial. It's all what you've got. But what happens is at some point you reach a ceiling with those skills and tools. You reach a ceiling. It can only take you so far. And if you want to take it higher, what do you have to do? If you're using everything you've already got and you want to go to the next level, you have to learn something new. And that's what we call becoming purposeful. Is taking, I want to get to this level, so I'm going to purposefully learn new, maybe I need to have a new relationship. Maybe I need to go to a class. Maybe I just need to get focused. I become purposeful 
in learning something new to increase my ceiling of achievement. So now, how does it feel when you're learning something new? Is it all warm and cozy? When you don't quite know what you're doing and you're trying to figure it out, does it feel lovely? Not all the time. Not all the time. How do we all like change? Anybody in here that just loves it? I do. Ooh, there we go. Brent loves you guys love change. So when you're in change, does it feel good? What happens when you don't know? Sometimes. And sometimes. Sometimes not. Okay. So in that, purposeful is being comfortable being in that uncomfortable position. Because you know when you're in that uncomfortable, you're learning something new that's taking you beyond what you had before. So moving from E to P means I'm committed to living in a purposeful lifestyle because I know if I want to go to the next level, I have to be changing and growing. How many of you grow when you're comfortable? How many of you experienced a lot of significant personal growth in comfort? When was your most significant personal growth? In hell. In hell. It's right. Like I got through it and I went back and go, oh my word, let me tell you everything I learned along the way, right? What's that country song? When you're going through hell, just keep going. So in that, that's really true. We find our growth comes when we're uncomfortable. So we have to commit in our real estate business to realizing I need to be uncomfortable or I'm probably sliding backwards. I need to commit to that personal growth and become purposeful in my business. You attain a certain level of success utilizing your natural abilities, but expect to hit that ceiling. When you like to achieve even greater success and break through that ceiling. Um, Ignite is designed to help you start your business. It's designed to help you, is not designed to help you start your business. It's designed to help you grow your business. It will help you move from entrepreneurial to purposeful through skill mastery. Okay? So most of the stuff you're going to learn, and I usually find it comes in script and role play where we get uncomfortable. Every one of us, me, everybody, is at some point when you're doing something that doesn't feel natural, we're uncomfortable and we want to back away. So we have to commit in real estate that we go forward in that and say, you know what, I'm going to be uncomfortable until it is comfortable. Do you guys feel like when you, when you practice, it becomes comfortable? Didn't everything in your life at some point, wasn't it uncomfortable? Now, most of the time we've been forced to keep going and then it becomes comfortable. Now no one's going to force you. So now you have to commit to it. Okay. And again, are we going to fire ourselves today or hire us back tomorrow? So that's committing to E to P, always moving from E to P and living in that purposeful style which leads us to being learning based. If I'm committed to being purposeful, would you not imagine that I would need to be committed to being learning based? I need to learn and acquire more skills and knowledge. Training and education are a big part of moving forward to attain your goals. Learning based individuals commit to the process of acquiring skill based habits. Not knowledge, skill based habits. There are things that I don't really understand, but if I make it a habit, it's a lot like exercise. Let's just put that out there right now, right? If I have this, the, the, the habit of exercise, do I really need a lot of the knowledge of why? Do I need to know why I get out and go to the gym every day? Or do I just need to go to the gym every day if I want results? Right? So that's that idea. Sometimes we just have to be committed to developing this to a habit. And quit worrying about that as soon as I understand it, I'll begin, that will make it a habit. It won't. We have to do it every day. And we'll acquire that knowledge through doing it. Okay? Gary Keller found that top agents, top agents spend 20% of their time in training. 20% of their time in training. The top agents. He works with the top 100 in Keller Williams. 20% of their, their year is in training. That's how they get there. Okay. And most of the time we put training on the back burner when we're busy. And those top agents are selling thousands of homes and they're doing 20% of their time in training. That moves us on to number five. This one, we, we, I feel like most of us get committed to about four. We feel like I'm doing pretty well. And then five hits us in the face. This is a lot like the ignite wall, the limiting beliefs. A limiting belief is something that holds you back from believing something that can, that can change your business. And it, we, I call it your, we call it your drunk monkey. 
It's the thing in the back of your mind going, this is uncomfortable. No way. Don't, don't, don't believe that. Don't do it. So let me give a couple of limiting beliefs. I need to be a professional, not an expert. Oh wait, no, this is, this is an unlimiting belief. I, um, I need to be a professional, not an expert. Expertise will come from doing. Training is the best way to prepare me for success in the real estate business. That's an unlimited belief. What would it be a limiting belief in that same idea? If it says, I need to be a professional, not an expert, what would the limiting belief be? I need to be an expert. I can't begin until I'm an expert. If I knew more, then it would work. I'm going to learn more. Dwayne, did you need anything from me? All right. Oh, did, was that a problem? Okay, okay. Oh, perfect. Awesome. Thanks, Dwayne. So on this, so when you say, my biggest limiting beliefs that I hear in um, Ignite is, I'll begin when, or that's just how the market is. Or, you know, it, it wasn't my fault. Or, or what you in the end going, oh, right, no, I'm sorry, I'm being accountable. Limiting beliefs are, I can't begin or I can't do that. Or, that doesn't work here. That may work in Minneapolis, but it doesn't work in Idaho. Or, there aren't any good leads out there. You know, nobody ever, open houses don't work. You know, I can't knock doors. Nobody wants to talk to me. They're going to they're gonna know I'm an age, a new agent and they won't work with me. Those are all limiting beliefs. And we have to let go going, why not? Well, it may not have worked for Adam, but it could work for me. Maybe Adam didn't give it the effort I'm going to give it. Or maybe I just need to go ahead and try. That is unlimiting beliefs. Don't ever think that there's something that's, if something comes up and makes you feel that way, that there's that in your mind, you got to let it go. Say, I'm committed to no limiting beliefs. I'm going to try things I've never tried before. I'm going to try things people say don't work, but I learned them in Ignite. Experience agents will tell you all the time, well, I've tried that and it doesn't work. Well, it's going to work for, you know, it'll work for somebody. Keller Williams doesn't make stuff up. They study it and they put it out there because it worked for somebody, right? And so the last one that moves it, when I'm removing those limiting beliefs, the last one is being accountable. This is an attitude and an approach to your entire, entire life. An accountable person says, everything in my life is a result of my choices and my actions. I own my life. So this concept is key because a lot of agents say, no real estate gets sold in the winter. That's just the way the market is. There's a ton of buyers, but no inventory. And so they use that to not be accountable why they don't have any results in their business. And then I could say, but why is this agent growing their business right now? Well, they have this and they have that and I don't have that. That's not being accountable. Accountable is this is where I'm at currently and this is what I'm gonna do moving forward. Okay, I lost that buyer. What could I have done to make sure I didn't lose that buyer? Or what can I learn so that I don't do that next time? If I want, you know, I'm accountable, why do I not have any appointments? Well, how's your lead gen? Well, I couldn't lead gen because I was busy or I don't like to lead gen or I, you know, those are all unaccountable things. You don't have any business because you're not lead generating. That's it. That's being accountable for your own business. Literally, this business is all about numbers. If you'll do the activities, they will work. Now, you may have to do more activities as a younger agent than an experienced agent. Absolutely. But being accountable means I'm going to be committed to just doing more. But as you do more, the experience will come and down the road, you'll have to do less especially if you stick to number two. If you lead generate, you will have to lead follow up, but then the, then the phone starts to ring. It comes from lead follow up, okay? So this is the six personal perspectives from Gary Keller. Um, the sh um, he says, well, the shift in a market happens when we, um, no, the book shift says when the market shifts, we don't have to settle for different results. We change our tactics and keep growing. That's what accountability is. I don't ride the market, I change my tactics and I keep growing. Ignite is designed to help create and cultivate accountability to be successful. Getting the most out of Ignite. Oh, any questions? So give me, you guys, give me some ahas about this. What did you hear about the six personal perspectives? What, what's, what's, what sticks out to you? What sticks out to you? What are some ahas? What What did you hear in those six personal perspectives, Brent? In uh, no limiting beliefs, 
Get away from the negative. Love Be that. positive. Love that. To me, that's no limiting belief. I love that. I love it. Be positive. Why not? Love it. What else? Give me two more and we'll move on. He's kind of adding to what he said, getting away from the limiting beliefs. Quit saying like, I'll do this when. No, just do this. Love it. Love that. What else? Give me one more. You are the reason you're going to make it or not make it. Yep. Which is awesome and terrible. Awesome and terrible. Because a lot of us don't believe in ourselves sometimes. I'm a little worried about it being all on my shoulders. That makes me a little bit nervous. Almost to the point of fear of, of freezing in fear when it's literally all on my shoulders. Which is why Keller Williams, I believe, is so awesome. It's because there there's a whole team here helping you get that structure to move ahead if you'll just step, take those steps forward. Appreciate that. That was really great. Thanks so much. So let's talk a little bit about getting the most out of this experience. Is number one, showing up. Showing up every day. Now, show up with questions. Doing the homework prior to so that you have some questions. Utilize this time to get that knowledge out of these people. Showing up every day. So the expectations is that you guys are a capper in training. We want you guys at some point taking home 100% of your commission. I want you make more, making more than $30,000 a year in real estate. I want you making more than that. And a capper takes home $32,000 of their $50,000. Because a capper means they've capped out of their commission split. So I want you guys making more than $32,000 a year, okay? Because I want this to fund a great life. Now, you may only need $20,000 to be happy. What do you think you'd do with that other $12,000? If you only needed $20,000 to be happy, what would you do with the other twelve? dollars Give back. Give back. Oh, I love that. That was, a, in my mind, the right answer. What else? What else would you do with that other twelve dollars if twenty dollars was enough? Go on vacation, right? Would you take anybody? Your family. Would they like to go on vacation? So make the money, right? What else? Have you guys all got your retirements ready to go? Nope. <laughs> what else, Adam? Invest. Invest. What happens if you made money now so you didn't have to make as much later, right? You have the ability to make it now. Make more now so you don't have to work as hard later. Great. Great. How many of you guys know um, somebody who only made $20,000 a year and, and uh, built a, a hospital, a cancer hospital? Anybody know anybody that did that at $20,000 a year? No? What did they have to do to build a cancer hospital? To build St. Jude's or primary children's? What did they have to do? Who built those? Huntsman. What did he have to do, Brent? He made billions. Billions of dollars. Was he a bad person then? Because he made a lot of money. That seems selfish. Good man. Good man. Very right? Good. If, you, if you guys can make money, and real estate is one of the most amazing ways to grow personal wealth. If you don't need it, there is somebody that does. And you can change this world with money. So you can't think of when we're trained a little bit to be, you know, money is the root of all evil. Is it? Or is it what we do? If we took that money and we did great things with it, we could change the world. Change the world. Most universities were started with people who had money. More money than they needed, so they gave it away. I want you guys to be in that situation. So I don't want you to think, well, I don't need that. I don't want to be that. I don't want to be greedy. I want you to be greedy. But then I don't want you to keep it. Take what you need and give the rest to somebody who doesn't. There's some great causes out there. And Keller Williams is a big proponent of that. It's great causes. Think of yourself um, as a way to a perpe a perpetuating something great. And that comes from making more money. So don't look at this as you should make more money and that's bad. I want you to say, oh my word, I've got to make more money. Because I believe you guys can change the world with that money. Okay? But you got to take care of your family first and then change the world. So that takes a lot of money. Okay? So let's go through this. Does everyone have their KW email addresses requested? You too, get with Josie. We'll get that done. You guys, have you guys all got your KW.com email addresses requested? Yes, yes, yes. Perfect. Now, um, note cards. So this, this course was written before social media was a huge boom. 
So note cards are wonderful. And every day your goal on the daily 10-4 is to do 10 note cards. Handwritten notes to somebody saying thank you, putting your business cards in there. Now I will allow you to do personal messages on Facebook or Twitter instead of note cards. But it has to be an interactive thing. It has to be that way, okay? Because there's a lot of people out there that'll, that like that. But you guys, hardly anybody does note cards anymore. It makes a splash. Do a handwritten card and mail it in the mail. It makes a splash. It makes you memorable. So don't skip over that. And then also we went over to the Ignite Home Base where you can find all of your courses. Does anybody have any questions on that? Okay, perfect. Perfect, perfect. Your big why. So I want you guys to really focus on this. This is one thing, this activity that we're going to do is understanding our big why. I want you guys to think about, oh, wait, no, I'm going to go through here. Oh, and this why. I want you guys to take a moment. What are you passionate about? What are you guys truly passionate about? What gets you excited? What brings you to tears? What evokes emotion inside of you? I want you to think about that. What stirs your soul? If you guys don't tie that to your job in some way, when this job gets hard, it's hard to keep going. You've got to tie that big why. Why do you do this? to that lead generation activity every day. Because when you don't want to pick up that phone or go out and knock those doors or hand out those cards, I want you to think back on to what was your passion and how this funds that passion. It might be family. It might be education. It might be retirement account. It might be getting investment property so you're um, having passive income. It might be something. There has to be something that stirs your soul and you have to realize that your activities are tied to that big why. And I encourage you to have a visual of that big why somewhere, somewhere close to probably your phone or your workspace. Because when things get hard, I want you to look at it. And I want you to be able to say, this is why I'm doing it. Get back to work. Right? Now, it doesn't necessarily mean it's benevolent. I admit this every single time because I know it has helped people because you think it's going to be your family or you think it's going to be charity or you think it's going to, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's not. I, I love my family. I adore my family. It's fantastic. But I will tell you what, if just providing for them is what I have to do sometimes when this is hard, I don't find it stirs my soul enough because I could go to get a job that's less stressful and provide for my family. This job what is my big why is I like to win and I like competition. I like to be number one and I like to be recognized for it. And I had to be okay that that's my big why. And I could go and sell, you know, go and be an office administrator, but I'd never get to be on a stage and I'd never get a medal for it. I'd never get to say I beat 50 other people doing it. So guess what? That's why I do this. And I'm okay with that. That doesn't mean I don't provide for my family. It doesn't mean I don't put money in the bank. It doesn't mean I don't do all those things. But when it gets hard, that's what puts me back in line. And I want you guys to figure that out for yourselves. What is that? And sometimes it's hard. And it's my change. Russ Donahue is a good example. He's a, he is a fantastic agent. And for a long time, he said, I want it completely out of debt. And I want to have rental properties and have them own free and clear and be completely out of debt. He got to that goal about three years ago. And then what do you do? Then what do you do? Because, you know, he's in his 40s. How do, what do I do from there? Because he would push, 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 push. And then he got there. So then you have to figure out a new big why. And it was harder than he thought it was going to be. Because his family was taken care of. And he had his reserves. And he had his retirement set together. Now what do I do? And does it stir my soul? Because just wanting something's not enough. It's got to get passionate about it. So I want you guys to come up with your big why. Okay? And have that somewhere in there. Now, let's go next to our monetary goals. So I want you guys to think about what is your goal? How much money do you need to achieve that big why? How much money is it going to take? 
And it's a good idea to figure that out, to figure out how much that is exactly. Because if we're going to make a goal and we're going to strive to achieve it, why not make that goal take care of everything that we want? Now, if I make a goal of making a half a million dollars a year and I only make 300000 well, that's not too shabby. But what if I make a goal for one fifty, and I achieve it? I would have rather hit that 300000 mark because I want to shoot for big goals, big goals. And then next year, I'll take a look at the activities. Why didn't I achieve it? If I knew the path, why didn't I achieve it? I'm going to change my tactics and be accountable for my business. And maybe I hit 450 next year, but I'm aiming for five. And my activities will do that. So let's, let's walk through this coming up with the factor. Now, I want everyone to take out a piece of paper and get out your cell phone or a calculator, whatever you've got. And I want you to put your monetary goal at the top. I want you to put your monetary goal. What is the goal? How much money do you need to make to achieve that goal? That big why? How much is that going to take? Is it going to be 250000 Is it going to be one fifty? Is it going to be a half a million? What is it? And I want you to put that at the top. Your total goal or just like for your first year? No, I want, I want you not to be worried about that this is my first. I don't want any limiting beliefs. I want the goal. I want the goal. I'm going to get my calculator out. I can figure out if I can remember how I, where, I, where I store it in all my folders. You guys ever organize your folders and then you can't remember where it is that you organize all your folders to? There it is. Okay. So let's take our goal. Now, what we're going to need to know, because we're going to figure out our daily activities. What do we need to know in this calculation is what is our average price our average commission in our area. So our average price around here is 200,000. That's the average price of a home in Idaho Falls area, okay? Our average commission rate is 3%, which means our average commission per unit is 6,000. Commission, price, Average commission. Okay. Now I want you to take your goal. I want you to take your goal. And I want you to add in the market center cap. Who remembers how much the cap is for the year? How much is the most you pay to Keller Williams in one year? 15 plus 3. 18000 So I want you to add in your $18,000. Okay? Because you're going to pay that out, not take it home. That gives you your GCI goal. Gross commission income. Gross commission income. We got that? Does everyone have your gross commission income goal? Now, we're going to divide that by our average commission per transaction. Take out your calculator, $6,000 is your average commission. So take your gross commission income goal, GCI goal, divide it by $6,000. This is gonna give you how many closings you need for the year at that average commission. Now you know your job. That's how many closings I need. Did everybody get there? Everybody know your units. Perfect. Now, divide that by 12. How many do you need per month? Now, we have to lead generate, so we need this many closings per month. If, you, if your conversion rate from units taken to closings is 50%, how many contracts do I need per month to achieve my closings? Times, so it's 50%, so times two. So I need to get this many deals under contract per month.
Now, if you need to go on three appointments to get one contract, how many appointments do you need to go on a month? So now, I need to lead generate because I need 14 appointments a month. And the MREA says those should be a 50-50 business, so I need seven listing appointments a month. Half of all your appointments need to be listing appointments. I need seven listing appointments a month. That is my job to achieve my $150,000. Does everyone have the number of listing appointments you need to go on per month? Now, if you have a listing, will the buyers come? They'll just call you. Other agents bring you the buyers, or they'll show up at the open house, or they'll call you off of your advertising, or whatever it is. So you just need to get on those listing appointments and take those listings, okay? Now, if you're a buyer's agent on a team, this might be different, this might be buyer's appointments, okay? So now, now we know what our job is. What's your aha from putting your number on your paper? What did you, what did you learn about your number? So Not, is it unachievable? No. What? Did you put a, a limiting belief goal down? No. Right? If I know all I've gotta do is seven listing appointments to get my goal, man, I can, I can do that. I can feel like I can do it. I love that. What else? Anything else anybody learn on this? Does everyone feel like they have a goal they can achieve? Did it seem outlandish, like you can't do it? No, absolutely not. Now, what you're going to find is this is a small number. It's just going to take the lead generation to get there. But at least I know by the end of the month I need seven. And I can achieve that. So it says here, for every day you don't lead generate, 90 days later, you can expect no money. You do not want this to happen. This is the number one thing to drive people out of real estate, is they think the money's gonna come and they have to wait 90 days for any results. And we are not a patient people. Especially when it's a paycheck that pays the mortgage. We are not patient. So we have to lead generate every day and know we have to hit that goal which means we have to every single day. At the end of the month, can I just all of a sudden pick up seven listing appointments? It's just, you know, all of a sudden I'm gonna to begin today? No, this takes time, because it's lead generation and lead follow-up, and we have to lay those foundations and get there. Because someone might say, yes, I wanna list with you in six months. You might get three or four or five of those a day. Oh, next year, absolutely. So you've gotta put those in the database and do the follow-up, so that next year you have one in the pipeline. It's the reason why experienced agents make more money than new agents is they've been farming it out and they've been putting seeds in the ground for however long. You've got to get the seeds in the ground. Okay? Perfect. So commit to daily lead generation. We are here every single day at 9 a.m. to script and role play and do lead generation. We are here available for you guys. So this is your goal during Ignite. Every single day, you need to add 10 new people to your database. 10 every single day. Now, Ignite is not meant to be comfortable and feel you know, easy and simple. It is about getting you into production quickly. 10 new contacts to your database every day. You need to speak with 10 people that are already in your database every day. Lead generation, lead follow-up, right? You need to write 10 handwritten notes, thank you notes. What's the alternate? If you don't want to do handwritten notes, social media, you can do a private message. You can't comment on their cute cat video. Private message, thanking them. Hey, it was great to meet you today and speak with you. Thanks so much. Here's my mobile app link. You absolutely can do that. But I encourage you not to miss out on those, ten, on those cards. That is a, is a powerful thing. Then preview 10 homes every week. Why do you think you need to preview 10 homes? Know what's out? Why is that important, Adam? Every day. And is the old stuff gone the next day? Yeah. Every day. Fast. It's in and out. It's in, and, it's in and out. And if someone comes up to you and you have no idea about any of those homes on the market, you've never seen or smelled one of them, 
That's how you smell like a new agent. Okay, it's because you're not you don't know the inventory. Ten homes a week. Now, what's awesome about this is the MLS does a weekly tour of new listings on the market. So every Tuesday, which is not an ignite day, which is nice. We don't do script and role play on Tuesdays because you should be on that tour. And every Thursday or Friday, they send out an email that says this is where they're going to start. It's usually at a title company. 8.45 in the morning till about 11. They tour all the, the new listings. If you're going to preview 10 homes, you get through quite a few right there. How many of you guys are, have a, a significant other in your life? Even if it's a kid, right? None? Zach? I'm, gonna, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I've got a cute girl I know. No, I'm just kidding. So... <laughs> I'll tell you what, your spouse probably is super excited that you're in real estate because they probably wouldn't mind going and looking at houses because everybody loves to wander through houses. You'll know that after you've done a few buyers. So in that, you guys go and preview homes. Now, it, if, if someone lives in that home and they have to clean the house all up for you to go preview it, no. Call up and say, I'd love to preview the home. They don't have to clean it. I'm going to walk through and go through. That's easy. Or pick vacant houses. But you guys, you got to know the houses that are, that are also occupied. And, but always call the agent, let them know you're doing a pre preview. So the seller doesn't expect feedback or, you know, what's going on. Send them a quick message, is it okay if I go preview that home? Or you went through it because you have a key to open it and just send them a text. Hey, I just previewed. I don't have a buyer with me. They want you to know the market because they want you to think of that house when you come across somebody. So those agents want you previewing that homes. That's why they do the tour. So yeah, get out there and preview homes. Okay, so we're going to watch a little quick video. A little video. Real quick. Like this. Nope. Did I drop that somewhere? There he is. There he is. Share screen. Let's make this work. I'm getting this technology. You guys are gonna have to help me. Hi, I'm Jeff Glover, and I'm gonna tell you the top five things that you need to know about using scripts. Step one, you're gonna need to get your scripts from a top agent at the office, your team leader, a maps coach, or of course, Keller Williams University. Step two, we're gonna need to do a total transformation of instead of talking and telling, of asking questions. Selling isn't telling, selling is asking a series of questions that leads to desired response. So instead of talking so much, we need to get in the habit of asking questions. And asking questions gives us control of the conversation. Control of the conversation gives us our ultimate outcome, which is an appointment set or closing. Step three, we need to listen with good intentions. Well, what I mean by that is we need to listen to their answers instead of just listening to them talk and asking another question that comes to mind. For example, instead of asking a seller where they're moving to and then going on to the next question, how soon would you like to be there? Ask them, where are you moving to? And when they give you a response, ask them, what takes you there? Step four in becoming better at scripts is we need to learn to mimic, mirror, and match the prospect. What I mean by that is we have to listen to their tone of voice. We have to speed up or slow down based on how fast the prospect is talking. That means when they respond and say, we're moving to Toledo, oh, Toledo, that's exciting. What takes you there? 93% of communication is body language and tonality. And that means only 7% are the words that we say or the questions that we ask. Step five, we need to take these five points and practice them daily. If you think of NFL teams, they practice 50, 60 hours on the practice field for a one hour game. Our game is our presentations and our appointments and we need to practice daily everything that we've learned every single day before we meet with our clients. When it comes to scripts, my biggest aha is that everybody has their own scripts. We're pre-programmed to have scripts and we're talking and asking questions that are scripted. However, what we found is that most of our own scripts are no good. And so we have to learn the right scripts, the right questions to maintain control of the conversation. Thanks for watching KW Connect. Make it a great day. Perfect. So give me some ahas from Jeff. What did you hear? What, what, what did you hear and what he said? Listen. Oh, that's my favorite one. Don't talk. Listen. It's my favorite one. Yes. We use scripts because then we have something to say and we can focus on listening. 
Otherwise, aren't we just worried about what we have to say next and we're trying to figure it out as they talk? Yeah, ask questions and then listen. And if you have your scripts internalized and memorized, when they say something to you, you can respond appropriately and then listen again. What else? Great one, Brent. That's your speed and personality. Yes. Hard for me. Hard for me. I like to go fast and I like to talk loud and that is not how it always works. So you have to really focus on it. It's not easy. I'm always practicing and I'll go back and go, oh my word, that appointment, I was not mirroring and matching. I was super intense and super excited and they were not. And you have to realize it and you have to keep going back and getting better and better. If you're a slow talker, you gotta learn to speed up. If you're a fast talker, you gotta learn to slow down. That's the way it is. And most of the time, it's because we're talking too much. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now, right? It wouldn't matter nearly as much if I wasn't talking so much. What else did you hear? Love that. Keep your questions and focus on them with your follow-up questions. Love that. Yeah. Focus on them. Every question is focused on them. I love that idea. And when they respond, say it to them again. I love that. Moving to Toledo. Toledo, that's awesome. Tell, tell them that you heard them. I think that's great. Anybody else? I have actually one that I got today, and I've seen this video about a thousand times. I thought, questions equal control. I thought, that doesn't feel very good. I don't want to control someone. But I realized, you know what I don't want to do is have this conversation spiral out of control. Get us off topic so there's more talking that isn't getting accomplished. So that we're going down bunny trails, especially if you are taking people down bunny trails. Questions mean you're controlling the, the conversation so it's effective to try to get them to what? If they're saying, this is why I want it, and then they're going off and all the next time. And then get a question to bring them back on track. Don't tell them to get on track. Question them back onto track. And get that kind of conversation to get down that path. That was an aha for me today. Because I didn't like that. I didn't like the feeling of that control. Because that might feel rough to people. But it's controlling the, situ the, controlling the conversation. Perfect. Nope. Is that guy? Okay. So scripts are cool. Nobody cheering for that. Everyone hates that idea. Everyone hates it. Adam, if you're in a store and somebody comes up to you and says, hey, can I help you? Are you looking for anything in particular? What do you say? Most of the time, just looking. Just looking. But are you just looking all the time? Or are you there for a purpose? Why didn't you tell him that? You don't want to talk to him because did it just come up naturally? If I, Did it just naturally? You're like, no, I just want, this is what I say. This is what I say. And then if I have a question, I'll go back. Why don't you just ask the question? But we don't because we're scripted in our mind. How many of you guys can say hello and not say, how are you doing? How many of you guys are, how are you doing people? Zach is. <laughs> right? Hey, this is Jessica. How are you doing? What does that do to that conversation, Zach? Wherever you did not want that to go. Because usually we're talking to people we know. People you don't know, what do they say when you say that? How are you doing when you don't know them? Oh, just fine. Yeah, that's fine. Their cat may have died five minutes ago, but they're going to say, fine, because they're Adam. Nope, just looking. But what happens if you know them? And let's say you haven't talked to them in a while. Oh, bless your hearts. Well, you just got in an hour-long conversation. But guess what? You are the one that asked the question. So guess what you have to do? You have to listen. And then you got to come up with questions to get it back on track from where you took it off the rails. So in that scripting, Zach, what do you say instead of how you doing? He wrote it down. This is Zach's first script practice. We worked on this one pretty much the entire time. Uh, hey, Jessica, do you have a minute? Perfect. Because we want to say something, right? So you're like, hey, Zach, instead of saying how you doing, hey, Zach, do you have a minute? It works just the same. You just got to embed that script in and get it there. And it's the same question. Do you have a minute? And that's really what I want to know. Because do you really want to know how they're doing? Maybe not. You may, I mean, honestly, if you don't really mean that, don't say it. Don't say it if you don't mean it. Now, if you really do, that's great. But most of the time, it's just a script we've used, and we really, that's not why we're calling. So get in love with scripts. And the purpose of scripts, a great script. Okay, you guys, if there's nothing you get out of today, this is it. Ready? This is the nugget. A great script is 100% customer-oriented, and benefits the customer 
throughout the entire conversation. Say it again. A great script is 100% customer oriented and benefits the customer throughout the entire conversation. All of your questions need to draw out what can benefit the customer. And they have to be customer focused. You aren't trying to get control to draw it back to yourself. You're trying to get control to find out if they have a need that you can help them with. Okay? Have you ever listened to someone talk for a period of time and realized afterwards you had no idea what they were saying? It happens way more than you might think, and it's probably the other person talking to you. Because you're talking along and they've tuned out because you're saying too many words. And it's not about them. I hate to admit it. I love a conversation about myself. Ask me questions about me, I'll tell you all day long. Your customers also feel that way. Make it about them and they'll tell you everything all day long. And they want to work with you because it seems like you really listen. And you really care about what they want and you're not just trying to sell them something. Okay? Scripts are a great way to move from E to P. Entrepreneurial means we say what we think comes to our mind. Purposeful is we say what is effective. Top agents practice every single day. So why don't you guys tell me, what are some of your limiting beliefs around scripts? Because this is Ignite number one, and this is where everyone starts to get uncomfortable is when we bring out the scripts. Tell me some limiting beliefs. Let's throw them out there. Give me the A number one. It sounds like a robot. It doesn't sound like me. Right. What else? Uncomfortable. Yeah. You're saying things that are not natural. Somebody piped in. What else? Come off like a salesman. Salesman. Everybody gets all ew. What do I have to do to get you in this car today? Right? On a scale of one to ten, how likely are you to buy this car? Right? Script. What else? Love that. Thanks, Bryn. What else are your limiting beliefs around scripts? They're not going to believe you. That's absolutely true. How about they're too direct? A lot of top scripts are super direct. They don't like it. Too aggressive. What else? How many of you guys have scripts that have sold 500 houses a year? Do you guys have scripts that have got you 500 houses a year sold? No? How about 100 houses? Anybody have any scripts that have sold 100 houses in one year? Look at your goal. How many of you have scripts that have sold the number of houses on your goal? No? So guess what? What you say isn't going to be as effective as what the scripts that are written by agents who have been selling those kind of houses are. Now, scripts sound like a robot if you don't practice them. Because they sound like you're reading them like this because you are because you don't really know what they're saying and you're trying to stick to the script. But if you practice them and you practice your no thanks, I'm just looking over and over and over again, even though everybody says exactly what Adam says, it sounds like it's true. Would you agree? It's the practicing of them until they sound like you. Because you need the words, because your scripts are not as effective, but then you need the internalization so you can put your voice inflection. If you like to say, okay, or, you know, or, hey, you know, you, you need to put yours in there, but you can't make the script up, because your words aren't as effective. So we call this memorization, internalization, then customization. But if you want to skip the memorization and the internalization and just go to customization, it's not going to be effective. That's not a script. That's just you making it up as you go. Right? That means you're practicing on your clients instead of playing in the game. So the negative consequences from failing to script. What do you think the number one thing is? I mean, three negative consequences for um, not having good scripts. That's right. Someone else choosing another agent. That's a number one. Someone else makes that commission. What's another one? Death. Death and blood. No. Thank you, Mike, for bringing that in. That's right. You won't survive in real estate. That's right. Either that or it'll take you so long, you're going to starve until you get there. I could probably use it. You'd starving to death. 
What's the number two? If you don't have good scripts and you don't get it down, you won't be a good listener. I will promise you that right now. You cannot be a good listener if you don't memorize your scripts because you'll be fumbling around trying to figure out. Agents who are, are smooth and roll is because they've internalized their own scripts. They all say the same thing. Mike, is it the answer to the questions the same every time? Yes. It's the same questions over and over and over and over again. It's the same question to how's the market? It's the same answer, but you just got to say it in a way that evokes excitement from them and it's about them. How do you answer how's the market and be about them? Because what do you normally say? How's the market, Susan? Yeah, what would you normally, what comes to mind in your entrepreneurial style? How's the market, Susan? It's great. It's great. Yay. Okay, see you later. Right, which is what I wanted to hear. But how do I make that about, how do you make it about me? It's a great time for you to buy. Yes. Rent. Oh, it's a great time for you to buy. If you are ever going to sell, you're going to sell faster than you ever have. Oh, I like that. Let's talk more, Brent. Right? He made it about me. I loved it. So your script is, is getting memorizing that script instead of that script. But you have to practice it because that script comes out first. Would you agree? How you doing? Comes out every time. Every single time. Perfect. I love that. Also, a third thing that if you don't have scripts, you're going to sound inexperienced. You don't sound confident. And if I want you to sell my house, I want, I'm not confident. I want you to be confident, right? Even if it's just like, you know what, what's great is I have a great team backing me. Anything I don't know, I can find out in about 30 minutes. That should give you confidence. But you have to practice saying it and saying that with confidence. Because you do have Mike Johnston, the head of the real estate commission in your back pocket. No one else nice does. Guy. And he's a nice guy. But if you aren't used to saying that I'm confident that he'll help if I need it, or Jessica Carden, or whoever else we've got on the staff, if you're not confident, they'll smell it. Because they're looking for weakness. Because they are not confident themselves. So they want someone who has that confidence. Okay? That's why practicing scripts is so important. The confidence. The confidence. Okay. Choose a way to incorporate script practice in your everyday routine. Everyday routine. Let's go like this. I don't think I have this video anymore. Here we go. Here we go. In your everyday routine. And I want you to be accountable. I want you to be accountable to your goals. I want you to be accountable to the fact that you're not scripting and role playing. And you, when someone asks you a question, you're going to fumble. And you guys, it's okay. That's not, not really death. It's a slow starvation. It's a slow starvation. But how long can you go without money? How long can you go to trial and error finding business? Or do you want to just get doing things that work and then start focusing on the customers? Okay, so be accountable. What's the one thing that I can do? We call this the focusing question. What is the one thing I can do such that by doing it, everything else will become easier or unnecessary? Let me ask you this. If I moved script and role play to the top of your 20%, does script practice and role play make lead generation easier? Does it make lead follow-up easier? Does it make an appointment? appointment easier? Does it make negotiation easier? Smart. Oh my word. And we think about that. If we use the focusing question, holy cow, scripting and role play actually moves to the top. It really does. Because everything else will get easier after that. If I'm going to make calls, if I know what I want to say, I'll pick up that phone. When I don't know what I want to say, or the last one didn't go well, it's sure hard to pick that phone up and make those calls. Yep, right? Script and role play just became the one thing. 9 a.m. in the morning. Okay, be accountable to your monetary goals. Develop a prioritization plan of action. A to-do list is unfortunate. A to-do lists are not um, planned, focused, or action-oriented. 
Rather, they're a catch-all uh, for unsolved issues, and they're not related to outcomes. So instead, we move from E to P with an action plan. Properly prioritize and plan your time. Say that 15 times fast. So you focus on the things that matter, your dollar productive activities, and avoid squandering time on low value activities. You have an entire staff at Keller Williams. What can you leverage to us? What can you leverage to someone else? We brought a transaction coordinator into the company because sometimes that leverage is just the transaction. So I can focus on my five jobs. Once I get past the script and role play, lead generation, lead follow-up, go on the appointment and negotiate the contract, the rest is 80%. What if I leveraged that? And I stuck to my five jobs. How much more money do you think you'd make? If you came in for eight hours a day and did script and role play, lead generation, lead follow-up, go on appointments and negotiate contracts. You'll notice I don't have show houses in there. Because you can leverage them. Because it... I know. There's nothing better than spending nine hours driving around. But I'll guess what? You, you know why you like it? Because it means you're having a legitimate reason why you're not lead generating. If we get real. It, people love to show houses. They're, because people said, I've got to see them today. It's the reality of it. I've got to go today. I can't lead gen today. I have to show houses. Is that legitimate? It is and it isn't. It is if you say, I'm the only one that can do that, and I set that appointment, and I didn't say I can start showing houses at 11 because I need to get my lead gen in. But it's really easy to say I'm showing houses, so I'm not going to lead gen. Super easy. How many of you guys walk into the doctor's office and they just take you in? See you right there. What? I don't. What do you have to do? Wait, why do you have to wait? Why, right, why, why do you allow that? Aren't you the customer? Shouldn't they do it when you want it? What makes the difference between that and you as a real estate agent? What's the difference between you knowing that you have to get in when the doctor says you get in and a real estate agent who thinks as soon as you call, you got to jump up and go? What is it? They'll take their business out. Why don't you go to another doctor? Not as convenient, but they don't want to see you for six weeks. Why don't they go somewhere else? Why? Say that louder. Is it because they deliver on what you want and so you only want to go to them? Is it because someone else told you this is the best doctor? Sometimes. Maybe it was another doctor who said, this is your guy. You have to be, be do have, you have to be the person that they say, I don't want to see houses with anybody else. If you're not available till 11, I will make it work at 11. And then you have to say, well, I, you know, I lead generate because I, when I have a listing, I look for buyers. And when you're my buyer, I look for listings because we have a low inventory. I do that till 11 o'clock every day. I can't give that up because then you don't have a house option. Or my seller doesn't have a buyer. I can't give up the, my clients for that, you know. Now, when you're under contract with me, I will do the same thing for you. I will work. Do you think you want to work with that agent? Or do you want the one that's like, I'm not busy, I'll go right now. Is that the impression you give when you just jump up and run? That you've got nothing else to do? Hmm. How much, some, do sometimes you think that something that you pay more for is worth more? You ever feel like that? That when you pay more for your shoes, they seem to probably going to last longer than the ones you bought at Payless for $8. But why do you buy them? What do you want out of that relationship when you pay more? Better. Better. I am willing to pay for better. For best. And best, right. I'll pay a lot for best. If I know it's best and I know it impacts me significantly, I'll probably pay for best. How many of you guys check your doctor's rates before you go? Or will you pay whatever they say? Right? Well, you probably fight afterwards if you feel like they didn't deliver. We should probably because they're probably overcharging us. I don't know that. I might. Healthcare. Don't start me. So in that, you guys, 
Why don't we think we're like that? What limiting belief do we have that we don't have the right as a professional real estate agent to say, I have the schedule and the reason is is because I'm delivering for my clients and I charge this much because I deliver and why would we question and why would anyone question us? It's us that makes the problem. We've taught them that that's the way this is. Oh, we've taught them I can go to another agent who will jump up and go, absolutely, he's not doing anything. He probably can help you because he probably won't have another client either. Again, and you probably won't come back to him. No, you won't say any of that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, and so, I mean, but I honestly could say, listen, I am busy, but I absolutely want to work with you. Absolutely, can we do it at 11 o'clock? And if they say I want to go somewhere else, do you really think they're going to be loyal to you? Or are they calling around looking for the agent who will jump up right now and they're probably going to go to a for sale by owner or do something, right? But I'll tell you what, it's hard. Those feelers inside, those limiting beliefs of I need that commission start to bubble. If I don't say yes, they're not going to work with me. Mike, would you agree with that? Yeah. Don't, be a don't be a pop tart. Nobody likes tarts. Just kidding. I just made that up. I like pop tarts a little bit. Right. But in that idea is you're teaching them that whenever they call, you should jump and run. You shouldn't have anything else to do but them. But that's not how a doctor or a lawyer or any other professional works, but you're teaching them that's how you work. And so when they don't get that, they're dissatisfied. But if you say at the beginning, oh, I'm so excited to look at homes for you. I am so excited. I have a next opening at 1230. Would that work for you? Now, how did that feel? Did it feel like I'm saying that I don't want to work with you? No. But my script is positive? Absolutely. Oh, I'm so excited. I have a 1230 or I have a four. Which one works for you? Well, I need to go right now. You know what? I've got an appointment right now. I'm always lead generating till 11 because I want to make sure I find houses that are on the market when you need one because you find out it's low inventory. And when you list with me, I make sure to look for buyers because my job is to sell your house. So I got to, got to stick that to 11 o'clock. But man, 1130, I'm ready to roll. Would that work for you? They'll say yes. They'll say yes. And if they absolutely say no, say, you know what, let me see if I can find another agent who doesn't, isn't as busy, doesn't have as many nice clients as I do, to see if they can work with you. They will not like that. And that's not being negative. Let me find you an agent who doesn't, doesn't, doesn't have as many clients and their schedule is more open. It's a little embedded command. It's a little nasty. It's not nasty. But it's, you know, but the idea for me, I always just say yes or no, and then I'm okay. I'm okay with the result. You guys have to get okay. Now, you're never okay if you don't have enough leads in the funnel. If you don't have enough leads in the funnel, oh, we're going to go to this one. You will not live by your calendar. Leads in the funnel means I know if this guy won't work, doesn't want to work with me because I'm not a Pop-Tart and he'll probably drop me. I only do that if I don't have enough leads. If I have enough leads, I'll let him go. Would you guys agree? If you had four or five deals in the pipeline and this guy was going to be unreasonable and not and, and, and dicker on your commission and expect you to go out every Saturday night at 8 o'clock because that's when he wants to go, would you fab a What? It's not worth it. It's not worth Why not? Why wouldn't it be worth it? Changing your whole perspective. Because this is supposed to be a life that I love. Nine times out of ten, you're wasting your time. Exactly right. And, no, and as a young agent, it's hard to believe that. But listen to agents who have experience. The ones that are unreasonable, they're probably, you're probably going to lose them in the end. Or they're going to be unhappy at the end, and they're going to tell everybody they know about it. And you can let them go by just being unavailable. I have 3 o'clock tomorrow. Uh, um, it works for you. And if they say, I can make that work, or if they get mad, if they get mad, no way. But if you don't have enough leads, you will have a hard time saying no. A hard time because that commission you need it and you have what's called commission breath we can smell it on you that guy that's gonna treat you badly can smell that you're desperate for that commission and so he's gonna like yep he's lucky to have me I'm gonna treat him like garbage it's true it's true you guys have to train your clients to treat you as a professional if you don't live by a calendar and you become a pop-tart that's how it'll feel Every agent, and I don't want you guys to feel like I'm saying don't. Every agent, every agent struggles with this. Every agent struggles with this. It is easy to say and hard to do. But every day you look in my calendar, you'll see 9 to 11. It says script and role play and lead generation. Do I honor it every day? God, I wish I did, you guys. 
but I'm trying every single day, and I don't put anything in those times. People don't care what you're doing. They don't care about you. So I don't even say that I'm going to I just say, mm -hmm. I've got an appointment already at that time. My is going to go up because it doesn't affect at all. Regeneration doesn't matter. If yeah. you've got an That's appointment, you've got an appointment. Same thing if you have a basketball game for your little kid. He's exactly right. You don't tell them, I've got my little kid's basketball game. They don't care. I already have an appointment at that time. I can do this or that. Just give them some other options. Yep. I love that. You guys, powerful. Thank you, Mike. Powerful, powerful. But you feel like you're lying if you don't tell them you're going to the basketball game. Because you don't feel like you're working. That's how it feels. Is you're like, oh, that's my kid's soccer game, and this guy wants to go see it. And you don't feel like, well, that's not work. And this is, and I need the commission, right? And so we sacrifice. But it's true. If you say, you know what, I don't have that time available. I've got an appointment already. How about this time? My husband, who is a marketing genius, writes, is a uh, copywriter, writes scripts for advertising. And he said, everybody's mind wants two options, at least. Three, any more than that, there's too many. Two to three options. And your mind will create options if the person doesn't give them to you. If you say, how about two o'clock today? What are the two options, Brent? Two o'clock? How about two o'clock today? What is it? Yes or no. Yes or no. Yeah. The option is yes or no. But they want to say yes, but they need to create two options. What if you say, how about two o'clock today or four o'clock tomorrow? You've given them two options and they can say yes to one of them. You will be amazed at that. And they would love to have that instead of you. How many of you guys have ever gone out to dinner and they're like, where do you want to go? And you want to poke yourself in the eye. What's your script? Right there. What? That's my script. Noodles. Noodles and company. Okay. And then Susan and I have the same script. What did you say, Susan? Um, oh, gosh. Yeah, I don't know. We go through this once a right? month. Right? Once a month. I don't know. I don't know where do you want to go? Because you know what? They don't want, they want two options. Give me two options and I'll pick. My husband says, I don't know, where do you want to go? And I give him two options because I don't like either of those. But that's my life. Those are personal issues. I apologize for bringing that up. Where do you want to go? Because obviously you have something in mind. So let's just go wherever you're going. But in that reality, your people want two. If you can script to where you're giving two options to everything, two options to everything, give them a chance to say yes to one or the other. Now they may say neither one of those work, they may say, do you have anything else available? Give them two more options. Just get in that habit. Develop that script. And you'll find out they love that. And they'll say yes to one of them. Because we've been developed in a system that when a question is asked, we naturally want to say yes. It's inside of us. That's what we want to do. So we live by a calendar. I have, where is my thing? I have one o'clock today or you know, three o'clock tomorrow. Now, if you time block it in, you'll know when you're in and leave that open. Now, if you don't have an appointment during that time, what could you do? If you've time blocked out two o'clock today and four o'clock tomorrow for appointments, but you don't have anything to do during that time, what could you do? What is it? Put them in right then. But what if you don't have anything to do? Like no, no appointments are wanting to be in that time, but you've time blocked it. Say that louder, Adam. Lead gen. Lead gen? Yeah. What else? Follow up. Lead follow up? What else? Say it. Oh, script and role play. Excellent. No one ever brings that one up. Right? You could do something. You could do something to move from E to P. Go online. Watch a lead generation class. Go on and practice some scripts. Go look for somebody else who's open. Script and role play with it. Do something. Don't just go, I'm going home. Time block those times to get better. Practice your listing presentation. Practice your buyer's consult. Your your Do your scenarios with your broker before he can't, fires you from your know, office. So in that, but you guys put those in. You should have lead generation and lead follow-up every day. And then you should have some spots put in for appointments. Because then, guess what? When one comes up, you have a spot that is not taken up. And you literally could say, I have tomorrow at 4 o'clock available. Would that work for you? Or how about Thursday at 5? And you plug them in. And if there's nothing going on at four o'clock, you do one of your five activities. Script and role play is practicing your listing presentation, is practicing your buyer's consult, it's previewing homes. Does that make sense how it works? Now you guys, are all of you guys doing real estate full time? 
Not even yet. Will you be doing full time or are you working another job? Full time? Kind of part time, right? See, she's already saying, well, I'm, yes, it is a job. It's a real job, right? So you're balancing life, having life balance in there. So you're going to need it even more so than anybody else because you need to fit all your stuff in in the time that you want. But if you'll do that around, let's say you've got soccer games, PTA, you know, whatever else you've got, you bookkeeping, what, you know, all of the things you do, right? All of those things in there, maybe it's around the golf and you put that in there, put your schedule around that. But if it's there, then you can work around the schedule and you get your job done. Okay. So I would encourage you guys to do that. Now I do a Gmail class every once in a while and a calendaring class. So you can come to that or I've recorded it. If you follow me on KW Connect, under the education tab, KW Connect, type in Jessica Carden, and then follow me in my playlist, in my technology playlist, my Gmail and calendaring classes recorded. I color code my calendar. I actually have four different calendars and I color code them and I put them in there so I can easily see where my times are open. But I time block the areas. I do appointments 1130 to 1230 and 530 to 630. I do lead generation from 9.30 to 11. And then I put on my other meetings in. And the rest of the time I get to be, what I love to do is free floating. I love to just do whatever comes up. Whatever's on fire, I can, I can address. But if I get my job done, I can run with my hair on fire at the other times. But if I just run with my hair on fire all the time, I really never get anything accomplished. Bold taught me that. Your schedule will give you the freedom that you want. Just get your stuff done in the morning. Okay? Live by your calendar. Successful agents plan their day and stick to it. You guys need to put in your big rocks. Who knows what the story of the big rocks are? It's another one of my favorite stories. Who knows? This is big rocks. Let me tell you. There's a professor. And he was up in front of his class. And he had a jar. A big empty jar. And he said, is this jar full? What do you guys think it was? Big empty jar. Everybody said, no, right? Not full. Okay. So what he did is he put in some rocks, right? Filled it up. And he said, okay. And he filled it all the way to the top. And he said, is this full? No. Everybody, but what did everybody say? Yes, it's full. He's like, all right. So then he took some smaller rocks and pebbles and poured it in. Filled all the spaces all the way to the top. He said, is it full now? But what did they say? Yes, it's full, it's full. He's like, all right. They took some sand. Actually, gravel, right? Same thing. Yes, it's full. No. Sand. Is it now full sand all the way to the top? No. Water. Filled all the spaces in between. He filled it with water, right? And finally at the end, he said, this is full. He said, okay. What if I would have put the water in first? Would the big rocks have fit? No. So what do you have to put in first? Your big rocks. You have to put in the things because if you fill it with all the little things, the big things don't fit in your schedule. And that's exactly how your time blocking needs to go. You've got to put in the things that have to be there first and then fill in the spaces and then you'll find out other things fit, but the big rocks will never get in there. So what are the things that are your big rocks? Oh, she's learning. Script and role play. What's the next one? Go on appointments. Negotiate contracts. Great. But guess what you really have to put on your schedule? Script and role play, lead generation, lead follow up. What else do you need on your schedule? Because the appointments and the contracts, they'll come. How about your soccer games? How about your vacations? How about your workout times? How about your spiritual needs, your physical needs, your emotional needs? All of those have to be in the calendar, you guys. I don't want anyone in this room's spouses or families to want you to quit real estate. But what happens is, is you don't put your big rocks on the calendar. And I love the lead generation. Absolutely, you got to put that in there. But I'll tell you what, family time's got to be in there. Personal time's got to be in there. Vacations have to be in there. Because every time you feel like, I'll take it when I get stuff, they'll never come. Never. Plan your vacations, and Mike left before I could use him. He plans every year ahead of time. And he throws those vacations, and they're non-negotiables. And sometimes he makes this office real angry. Because that vacation comes at a bad time. He just says, sorry, that's my vacation. And he's out the door. 
because, and it's not because he doesn't love us, but he prepares. And if he knows it's there, he can get things organized to take care of that time. But if he just says it's Thursday and I want to go tomorrow, it, can you really get it organized in real estate? It's hard. You got to plan ahead of time. If you're going to go on vacation at the end of the month, you need to lead generate because you're going to be gone for a week. So you got to move all that lead generation up and get it accomplished if you want to maintain your goal. I'm gone a lot this month. That means I have to get all my appointments, everything done in the spaces be, in between. But I know that because it's on my schedule. And I'm not willing to go, well, this month I'm not going to reach my goals. Meh. Darn it. I guess that's just the way it is. No, I'm accountable. That means I've got to figure out my appointments on my calendar in between my other rocks, my big rocks. So calendaring, super important. So you guys all have the calendar for Ignite. I will hope that you will put that as a big rock on your calendar for the next four weeks. I will hope that's what you will do. I intend that's what you will do. You can have also the calendar. Josie can help you get the office calendar on your phone if you want to know when the other classes are. Every Monday, so after today we end at 1 o'clock, I do the E-Edge 101, and there's a technology class every Monday from 1 to 2. So as soon as I'm done with this one, I roll right into E-Edge 101, which is how do I lead generate with the technology that Keller Williams provides? So I'm going to show you the database management system, and we're going to go through that. Um, next week is the mobile app. The third week is... Um, the marketing system that you have, and the fourth week is your homekeeper app. So I teach those every Monday, one to two. Every Thursday, there's something going on. A lot of times it's contracts classes. You need to get those contracts classes in and watch those calendars and get those in because you can be in class in Keller Williams all day, every day, it'll feel like. But if you want those classes in, you got to put them in your calendar so that you can adjust around them. But guess what? There's never a class from 9 to 11. Why do you think that is? Lead generation. We do not ever get in between lead generation. You can be in this room 9 to 11 every day making your calls. Okay? Live by your calendar. Accountability partners. I encourage you to show your, show your calendar and talk about your goals with someone who's going to hold you accountable. If you're in the productivity coaching program, I will be holding you accountable to what you say you want to do. Maybe you're on a team and it should be your team lead. Maybe it's your spouse. You want a real accountability partner? Tell your kids. Tell your kids and get ready. Because they do not let up. Especially if they know how it benefits them at the end. You want real accountability? Tell your kids that if I hit this goal, we're going to Disneyland for Christmas. Holy nightmare. That will get it done. Chalmers Haas, I love. You'll notice if he goes up to his office, if you go up to his office on the second floor, there's houses on his door. Every year at the beginning of the year, his kids get out as many, and he figures out how many units he needs to close, and his kids color the houses, and then he gets to put them up, or he puts them up, and then he gets to take them down. The kids get to come in and take them down, and they know what that stands for, and sometimes when he's showing houses in the evening, they know why he's doing that, but he also makes sure he knows that when he needs to be home, he's at home. He gets his job done, and then when he's at home, the phone is off because he schedules that in that way. But his kids know why he's doing what he does. And they know what the goal is. And he tells them, he says at dinner, they're going to tell me how many appointments did you do? How many contacts you make? And he has his goals right there. And he, and they hold him to it. And he loves it. He said, my whole family's involved in my business. So it's fantastic. And if I haven't got my calls done, sometimes I say, well, why did you come home? Didn't you need to get those calls done? Right? Or why don't you go in and get those done right after dinner? Because the kids are invested. They're invested. So think about that. So there is an agreement inside of your um, mission one and your students um, session one that is an agreement of expectation for both you and your family. And your family's agreement is I understand my commitment to growing my business in real estate. And I understand that I'm committed to um, that it's in starting real estate, it, um, the work days may extend sometimes to evenings and weekends. And I understand. That, and, and I understand the commitment and give my complete support. And that may mean for a while, caring for kids and meals and cleaning, whatever it is. So in that idea, but then you commit to understanding that your family is supporting you so that you can succeed and you commit to doing the activities that are required to get that succeed. If your family commits to supporting you, you better darn well commit to them to doing the activities that, that are going to get you there. And you commit to communicating the schedule to your family so you can better have better time to plan together time. 
And I want you guys to add in there, and I commit to turning my phone off when I'm with them. Because a real estate agent, they're the classic phone on the ear at the soccer game. Yes. They think they've got to answer that phone call no matter what. Every time. So you guys commit. When I'm with you, I'm going to be with you. But when I'm at work, will you commit to supporting that I'm at work? Right? Is there any other business that you have to ask that for your kids? Because most people are like, well, you're a real estate agent. You should be able to do whatever you want anytime. That's because we've taught them that, yeah, I can come and go as I please. But if I'm at work from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. every day, I'm at work. Just like if I worked at the site. You can't call me and ask me to go pick up the laundry if I worked at the site. Well, you got into this business to be flexible. Absolutely. Do you want me to make any money? Because at the beginning, I've got to get that done. If I can farm it out and get those seeds in the ground, I can be more flexible down the road. Can you commit to helping me get this started? And when we hit this goal, I'm more flexible. But what you're going to find out is you're going to be busy enough that those, those hours get taken up. At this beginning, you're just doing more of the generation activities than the other activities. So get those commitments. So putting it all together, getting action plans instead of to-do lists. You guys feel like you understand what that means? Action plans instead of to-do lists. What are the things that need to be done? Prepare for your next class. That means getting mission one and two completed and reading session two. You probably have to go back and read session one, right? Um, recall the steps. Um, think about your ahas. Enhance your learning by watching the videos. Okay. Final thing, you guys. Ahas. What did you get today? Final ahas for today. Everybody give me one. What did you pick up today that you're implementing? Or that it rang true for you? Oh, man. Love it. Love it. If you're like me, that feels restrictive. Until I realize I have freedom on my off time because of that. I love that. That's my same one is time blocking. Time blocking. Yep. Love it. Right. Oh, yes, right. Being comfortable, being uncomfortable. Absolutely. For sure. What else? Asking enough questions for your situation. Love it. Questions control the conversation. Ask more questions. Love it. What else? Proper prior preparation prevents poor performance. Ooh, I love that. Proper prior, proper pre preparation. Six P's. Proper preparation. Proper prior, prior preparation, preparation prevents, prevents poor, poor performance. performance. Wow. Love that. I've heard uh, perfect, pra don't practice till you're perfect. Don't practice until you're, oh, don't practice till you, um, so you don't get it wrong. Practice until you can't get it wrong. Um, I'm going to come up with a better one. It's better than that. Is don't, don't, um, don't practice until you get it right. Practice until you can't get it wrong. That was it. Last one. Susan, what's your aha? And then we got Bryn gave us our hers. Kyle, what's your ahas? One thing you're taking away. I just need to work on that calendar more. Excellent. I love that. Love it. Susan. Um, where's my one? Uh, I would say learning the importance of the script control thing. Love that. Love that. What's the thing I told you guys not to forget? If there was one thing you could take away from today, if there's one thing that you remember, what was it? Yes. Yes. Anything you say should be 100% customer focused and benefit them the entire conversation. Excellent. If you write every script that way, you will love using your scripts. You will love them because your customers will love it. Okay, you guys, you're done. Ignite session two, Cindy Bates team will be the next two. The next one will be, uh, it's database management, putting your database in order on Wednesday. And then on Friday, it's lead generation, finding your business. So both of those are super important. Okay, any questions? If you're staying for eEdge 101, that starts one minute ago. Thanks, you guys. You're awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, you guys.
in internet land. I'm going to I'm going to broadcast the E edge. So if you say, um, I'm going to stop and restart. 